took a no-hitter into the sixth. Top six, tied at one. Kareem Garcia lifts it to left. Eric Burns in foul territory. This former UCLA Bruin, who never played outfield before going to college, makes a nice catch. Palama, by the way, gave up a run on a walk and uh, sacrifices in an error. So he's still carrying a no-hitter after that. In the top seven, Brandon Phillips. That's the end of the no-hitter. We sort of would let sports center order, right? Yes, probably would have been a little higher up. Gave up two hits and one earned in six and a third. Bottom eighth, five three A's. Bases loaded for the slumping at Miggy. Tejada, a flare to right. It's dropping in. That's the way you break the slump. Tejada, two for four in the game. A's win, 6-3. Red Sox winner in their series opener with the Angels. John Burkett twirling third inning. Gets Eric Ono frozen up. Adam Kennedy waves at one. Burkett strikes out the side in the third. Fifth inning. One zip Angels, but Burkett runs into some trouble. It's David Eckstein. Just a little bit of a flare gets down. With two guys in scoring position, they will score. Three nothing Angels. Then after a couple of more scoreless innings from <laughs> Burkett, and bring out the umps. They're gonna pat him down and check him. Perhaps sandpaper or power tools or something. Get Leslie Nielsen out there looking on him. Of course, Burkett came in 4-0, .58 ERA in four career starts at Edison Field, so perhaps Maybe you had some. I don't know why you check them. You win 3 1. Oh, psych! And the glare. Angels go a winner. We'll pick up the Tigers Mariners. Top seven tied at four runners at the corners. Dimitri Young. Gonna ground the third. Mark McLemore checks the runner. Good baseball. Then flips it over to Brett Boone, who's looking to throw home. Gets wiped out by Carlos Pena, making the hard slide. One more time, you see. The run will score five for Tigers. And Bob Melvin doesn't like clowns and doesn't like this play. Thought Pena was out of the baseline, no love. Bottom eight, Tigers up 5-4, but in trouble. Second and third, two out. Randy Wynn grounds out to first, so they will escape this one. But we go to the home half of the ninth. And again, runners on second and third. Mark McLemore, the go-ahead run. Pops it up off Matt Anderson, Dimitri Young. He'll glove it, thank you very much. The Tigers, again, the third one of the season, 6-4 the final. Yankees going for a 20-4 and four start, trying to become the first team to 20 wins this season. Doug Davis fresh up from AAA, and Jason Giambi welcomes him back to the show. Fifth of the season, tune-up in Yanks. Top of the second, one on for Alfonso Soriano, and he is unbelievable. <laughs> Holy cow, hey. happy birthday to Million Ron Konkuma. <laughs> Career best 14-game hit streak now for Soriano. Yanks up 4-0, but here come... The Rangers off of David Wells. Rafael Palmero busts out the whooping stick. Number 497 of his career. Seventh of the year, 4-3 Yanks. Bottom of the six, 5-4 Yanks. And here comes A-Rod to the plate. And A-Rod got it. Eighth homer of the year. Game tied at five. Ball flying out of the yard. But we go to extra innings. Two on, two out. For that man, Soriano again facing closer Uget Urbina. Soriano's 16th multi-hit game of the year. He's batting 389, now 24 RBI. Second in the AL after he plays Jorge Posada. Yankees up 6-5, up 7-5, and they hand it over to Juan Acevedo. A-Rod, the tying run at the plate. And Acevedo, now 5-for-5 five five in saves this year. Yanks 8-1 on their current road trip, win 7-5. Even more frightening news for the rest of the league. Yanks have won 20 of their first 24 without Mariano Rivera, who is returning to the team Tuesday, healthy and ready to go. The reliever proclaimed himself ready to return from his groin injury when the Yankees returned from their current road trip. Introduced to you, Jerome Williams making his Major League debut. Second time this week, the Giants have run out of guy making his Major League debut. In the fourth inning, he ran into some trouble with a one nothing lead. Walks Bobby Abreu on four straight pitches. Jim Tom gets walked later. Two batters. Next batter, David Bell. We got bases full of Phillies. And then the next batter, Todd Pratt busts out the walking stick. Abreu, one of the four times he touched home plate in the night. Scored tied at one. Same inning. Bases loaded two on Brandon Duckworth, the pitcher. And I'm, I guess I'm mandated to say he helped his own cause, right? Yes, you are. Uh, after the game, Williams is sent back to AAA. Jim Tony. That's his good one. Just kidding for it. <laughs> I follow you. Uh, it's his third of the year. Phillies win 10 to 2. Beer makers and the Braves. Top second tied at one. Wayne Franklin fouls off the pitch, and then the ball hits his cute little oh, girl no. in the stands. Yeah. Now the guy next to her, he gives her he gives her the ball. 
right? That doesn't appear to make her feel any better. And of course, oh, that's real tears. Obviously, though, right? we realize that. Yeah, that's a little sore on the foot. But anyway, guys, just for future, try jewelry next. That might help. Bottom four, still tied at one. Franklin offering to Julio Franco. Brady Clark charges, make the sliding catch, and as you see here, they get her ice of sorts. There you go. Right. <laughs> and she's feeling you know, her own sister there taking care of, which is nice. Bottom seven, we're tied at two. Valerio De Los Santos, who's from Sturgeon Bay, Marcus Giles to right center, it's gone. 3-2, Braves, Giles for the See, that's going to be the final, but finally, Don Sutton, the Hall of Famer, who's over here, is an autograph. Alls and all ends well. That's great. She's too young for spot three, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Astros and Le Expos, top three, no score, Jeff Bagwell. The solo homer to left. Bagwell's ninth. He was two for five. The second one, his 2,000th career hit, one zip Astros. Bottom eight, tied at two. Billy Wagner, pitching with one out, gets Andy Chavez. Then next batter, Jose Vidro. He goes down, side retired. In the ninth, Wagner still out there, gets Vlad Guerrero. Henry Mateo goes down. We go into extra. Wagner cruising with four Ks, but he goes to the 10th, his eighth batter. Wagner still in, hasn't gone past two innings in more than six years. And on the 0-2 count, 98 miles an hour is 26th pitch. Macias turns it around and get ooh. Says he was looking fastball, he found it and hit it. His first RBI of the season makes the Spose a winner, 3-2. Sitting on dead red with the Cubs in Colorado, Rockies in second place in the NL West. Todd Helton turns this one around from Sean Estes, just not out of the park. Well, of course, actually held it. Helton three for five. He's batting 345 after he plates Jay Payton. Two batters later, Helton's 24 RBI leads the NL, by the way. Two batters later, Larry Walker, base hit to right. Estes, a Coors nightmare, allowed 12 hits and seven runs in two plus innings. Rockies up six to two. On the flip side, well, that humidor was working for Sean Chacon coming into Saturday's game 3 0 with a .980 RA. The 30 strikes out Corey Patterson. Top four, Mark Bellhorn, rung up. Top six, Sammy Sosa, swing and a miss. Eight strikeouts for Chacon. One earned run, seven innings pitches. ERA now 1.04. Rocks win 8 5. Lower third fact, the Devil Rays have won five home games after trailing by three or more runs. They did just all six of time last season at home, and here they are down 3 nothing. and Melvin Mora gives it more of that. He's now fourth homer. It's 5 nothing Orioles, but the Devil Rays come back, take the lead 6-5. Aubrey Huff busts out the whooping stick, third of the year. He had four hits in the game. Devil Rays go up 7-5, up 8-7, bases full of O's in top of the sixth. Chance to take the lead. Jeff Conan to center. Rocco Baldelli. He's a ball player. And the D Rays win their sixth at home in a game when they've been trailing by Toronto, where they were up by two in the eighth inning. But Tom Wilson changes that off of Jason Grimsley. Two runs come on down, and we are all tied at six. A fresh game of baseball going into the top of the ninth. Still tied at two. Two on. Nobody off for Ken Harvey facing Jason Kirschner. So with two on, let's try and bunt him over. Maybe no, we'll swing away. One strike. Now let's look over at the third base coach, John Mizrock, for the sign. That's bunt. That is? Yeah, touch your chest and then clap. Bunt. That's a, not a good attempt. So Tony Pena, <laughs> just let him swing away. Why not, right? <laughs> because, you know, he can hit a three-run homer. Hacking. How about that? Good thing he missed the bunt. It's gone. Royals win. They're 17 and four. Win nine and six. Twins and White Sox. Twins snapped a six-game losing streak Friday. White Sox, bottom four, two on Sox. Megla Ordonez, your pick to click off Kyle Loesch, which will disappoint Stu Cliver. And Sox go up 3-1. Ordonez, two on the night, five on the season. Now we flash back to Friday, J.C. Romero, and he's plunking uh, Ordonez. Well, earlier in the game, Mark Burley hit Doug Minkiewicz, which is Polish for whatever it was, hit me, I forget. Yeah. Back to Sarah then, Ordonez next at bat, and Loesch drills him in the back. Now that's just old school baseball justice. Don't get it, not sure I understand it, but that's what it is. And then, fans getting on Minkiewicz. John Garland drills. Well, that's not gonna make anybody happy. The benches are gonna come out. And, well, Megler says, I don't know if this is over or if it's gonna stop, but oh goody, 17 meetings left to go between these two. Sox won at 7-4. Cardinals, Marlins. Tony La Russa sitting out his one-game suspension, so Dave Duncan in charge of the pitchers. Jose Okendo sharing the other half of the managerial duties, and Duncan's staff would implode. Jason Simon Tachi pitching well to the seventh, but gives up Mike Lowell's fifth homer. 
Cards lead cut to two to one. Steve Klein comes in. Brian Banks singles up the middle. Two men on. Dustin Hermanson comes in. Luis Castillo, RBI single. Gerald Williams will score. And oh, where is engine number 42 when you need him? Florida scores all five of its runs in the seventh. Pittsburgh just a Scott Sauerbeck sighting in the eighth inning of a 3-3 game facing Sean Green. He got it. Green's third of the season. Dodgers up 4-3 and take another look-see. Jason Kendall, the catcher, as you see, sets up outside, and Sauerbeck misses his spot. See ya. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth. Eric Gagne is the man in the room. Facing Reggie Sanders, first and second. He hoses the bunt attempt, so there's one out. Still runners on first and second. Pokey Reese, 97 miles an hour, can't check it. Now two out, facing pinch hitter Craig Wilson and Gagne. Heat, seven for seven in save opportunities this season thus far. Dodgers win by the final of 4-3. Check the Padres and Reds. Bottom two, no score. Adam Dunn. Changes all those zeros on the board. So at this point, there were only three, but still, that's the end of it. Done two-run shot, his eighth, and the Reds are in business. Top six, 3-1. Ryan Klesko facing Danny Graves with a couple of mod. Cincinnati may want to rethink that Graves is a starter thing. 0-2 coming in, six and a third, six runs, five earned. Klesko's fourth makes it 4-3 Padres, three-run job. Great out of the pen. Bottom seven, six, five pots. Base is loaded. Matt Hurd is facing Richard Taylor, and he walks him. All four. Padre pitchers walk 13 Reds in the game. We're tied at six. Bottom nine, Sean Casey's still tied. He's convinced he has just won this game. But no. The two runners on, mm. stranded. Mark Kotze, the great diving catch. There it is. <laughs> and Casey, he feels bad. But bottom 10, pinch hitter Ruben Mateo with the base is loaded. You nibble on a guy hitting 175. Luther Ackman walks in the game-winning run. Reds win at 7-6. to six.